Afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. I'm just trying to get up my comments and everything so I can see you all. Should be able to see my. Down. Yep, I should be able to see my wiggly fingers in a minute. Yeah, just popping them out, and then I'll be able to see the comments as well. So, if you're on and you're watching, please say hello. Well, not say hello. If you can type hello in the comment box, and then I'll know that you're actually watching, and I can say hi back. Is there anybody there? Hmm? One. <laughs> if you're joining me, if you can just type hello in the comment box and then I can and then I know who's on. Just gonna straighten this phone up actually. better isn't it? Some widget reflection as well. Hi Gamer, how are you? Hi Bev, how are you? So I've just adjusted my camera so I'm moving my mat as well so you can get everything in shot. So I'm not actually in the kitchen this time, in the dining room doing doing the live, I'm actually in my craft room. So this is the first time, so we that's why I came up earlier with us doing a live for a split second, because I happened to hit the camera. <laughs> so there we are, so we're doing maths with you. So if anybody else is on, if you just say hello, or comment hello in the box, that'd be lovely can't hear you so please do comment by typing in the comment in the box below uh, I think Gavin's going to be putting a link on as well at the bottom and if you can share it that would be lovely if you can share with people you think might be interested in the live <laughs> yes I'm in my craft room <laughs> You can get it in yours as well now, Bevel, can't you? There we are, just... There we are. Hi, Dawn. You okay? Hi, Helen. Hi, sis. How are you? There we are, so Gavin's put a... Oops. Something on by there, and then it's vanished. Yes, I know you can get in your craft room again, Bev. Right, so the, I gotta say, we. Hi, Gavin. So, Gavin is now down in the kitchen dining room, and Gavin's gonna actually be crafting along with us as well. So, Gavin is downstairs, and I'm upstairs. So we're actually going to be concentrating on doing this little card first because it's a nice little simple card. It's using the wax paper technique. Um, but I will show you a little way of doing um, the resist technique as well with um, your Versamark or Versafine. Not Versafine. Versamark or Perfect Medium or your clear embossing ink. Okay. Because you can see the lovely pattern in the background of here behind the flower and it's actually within the petals of the flower as well. I know, so if you hear dum 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 it'll be Gavin flying up the stairs to try and get something that he hasn't got downstairs. <laughs> okay. So so how many we are? How many more we got on? Say hi if you if you're on, but we're gonna concentrate on this bit first. Okay, and then we'll continue on then 
with similar techniques but making a man's card. So this could be that way with a sentiment across there, you know, so it, it can be changed around, okay? And if you want to do two square ones for a man, then we just chop it down and make it smaller. So, first things first, with this card, I want to work on getting the card base done first so that we call that. And then I'm going to work on this little wax area here. Okay? So, first thing you will need is a 300 gram piece of white card. And you will need a scoreboard. Okay. So I'm going to just move that card out of the way. So I've got my Purple Crafters Companion board. And I've just put my card on it. So that the, it's, the card is up to the flat area where the handle is. And then this last whole line here is half fold A4. So that's all I'm going to do is go up there. Just nice and gently and I can flip it over which is used to be called the huggy trick when huggy used to be out and about and I'm going to do that as well okay and then I'm going to fold it up so you should end up with an area that's slightly bigger on one side than the other and the bigger side will actually be your front of your card okay so that's my scoring done for that card okay so we also need to cut it down so i need my trimmer so i'm going to use this trimmer today because gavin's got the guillotine so i'm just going to place that in front there i can either put it in open with the fold going there or i can actually cut it while it's sealed like that and we're going to cut that to 15 centimeters so that's one five 15 centimeters and that's going to be a 15 centimeter by 15 centimeter card okay yeah which is one eighth of an inch under six inches okay so now i have that okay so that is my base card for this one so this is i've put thinking of you um you can put um with sympathy or deeper sympathy you know whatever sentiment you've got we'll put that on a bit later okay so that's that one i'm just going to pop that to the side there a minute so that's that one i'm going to put that to the back so it's out of the way hi alison <laughs> I bet it is weird, Gav. Do you want me to close the bedroom door? Or the craft room door? <laughs> Mum's okay, Alison. Um, thank you, everybody, for your messages on my post yesterday and this morning. Um, I've just been told, and I have updated my post, my comments, uh, that Mum is actually having a um, pacemaker fitted tomorrow at the Heath Hospital. Um, so she will be in for a few more days until she's up and walking and that they test her and make sure that she's okay and everything's running right. So thank you very much for all your comments and I will show Mam all those comments when she comes out as well. So it'll be a nice little uplifting thing but she will have to rest for four weeks when she's out. So thank you very much. So this is another piece of 300 gram that I got. If you've got 250 gram super smooth you can use 250. You could use 200 but i'm using 300 because i'm gonna we're gonna be eyeing in a bit of this so, so this is one of those things and i'm going to cut it while it's landscape to 14 centimeters by 20 and that is going to be our ironing piece for the big card Okay, so we've done that ready. So we'll pop that 
back with the with the folded card for the small one and then the other piece you've got you can either cut it to the same size so 14 by 20 so that's I always work in centimeters So is everybody okay there? Has everybody got to that point? If you're crafting along. So we've got two pieces that are 14 centimetres by 20 centimetres and we've got a folded card which is 15 by 15. Okay so the folded card and one of these pieces can be put aside and I'm now going to take my wax paper okay and we only need it to be roughly the size of the card really I'm just tearing the wax paper you can cut it with the scissors if you want to be more precise but we don't really want it to be going over the edge of the card okay so that'll do for me and I can leave that little bit to do a border or something like that so this is going to be for this one okay and I'm just gonna plug my iron in ready and the first thing so my wax paper is a little bit shorter and it just fits in that way do I need to do that bit? do I need to do that bit or bit? Cutting those two bits down to 14 by You've 20. already done that because you've already prepared your wax ones. Yeah, well, I've already cut one. <laughs> right, that's okay. Because you're getting another sheet. Just, yeah, that's that? for the other card. Yes. I've already got another sheet for your card base. Right, that's for cutting the circles and all this stuff. Alright, so. So just take another piece of card. Well, no, I've just cut it in half. So it should be alright, shouldn't it? Just join laid everything. Right, so I don't need to do this bit then. No. So, so Gavin's just come up wondering why he's had to cut that, but he's already done that bit because he didn't need to have the iron downstairs. So, Sarah, if you're joining, um, we need a folded card, which is 15 by 15, which is a 300 gram card. And then out of another sheet of either 250 super smooth or 300 gram, we need uh, two pieces cut out of one, so 14 centimetres wide by 20 centimetres tall. Hiya mum, you okay? Hope the weather's lovely with you. It's glorious and sunny here. At the moment, I think it's a bit windy, mind, but it's gloriously sunny. So I'm now going to take my wax paper. Yes, please... Please type in hi, don't say hi to the screen because I don't hear that. <laughs> so type in hello or hi or stuff like that and then I can say hi back to you. So I've taken wax paper. Now I've tried grease proof paper, it doesn't work. Um, it's got to be a wax paper and I did do a little video yesterday I think it was or Thursday evening just to show what the wax paper will do. And I've crumped it up into a little ball and I've reopened it back up. Okay. Or was I supposed to fold the second card in half or do we do that later? We do that later, Gavin. Okay. So so we've only folded the six by six or fifteen by fifteen and we've cut the two pieces to fourteen by twenty. So then I've taken my wax paper that I've just ripped to a little bit smaller than the 14 by 20 and I've crumbled it into a little bowl and opened it up. Oh, lovely. Is it a nice walk down to the village or just around the block? Mum. Right, so now I've got that and now I need to choose 
um, an embossing folder. So the embossing folder I've chosen to do, and this will be the embossing folder that will actually show, it's the pattern that will show in the background of this lovely little flowery one year. Okay, so it's literally the background that's in that, that colour background there. Okay, so I've chosen, you've already done this Gavin, you've already sorted your, your wax paper bits out so you don't need to do any of this. So you just need to choose a embossing folder with a, a nice pattern for a, a sympathy card or a thinking of you card. You can make it a birthday card if you want. That's entirely up to you. We've crumpled our wax paper up and then we're going to place that into our embossing folder and we're going to put that through our machine, our embossing machine. Okay, so I have actually got my grand, grand caliber. And I'm cheating with the Grand Carver a bit because I'm actually using the grey board, the grey base plate, the squashy mat, I'm putting that in there and then I'm using one of my Big Shot plates because that's thin enough to put it through to emboss the wax. But you can use your um, pink one or your, or your raspberry plate. To do your embossing you know what plates you use for your embossing machine okay and that is that bit so literally I've placed the wax paper into into there and now it's got little roses and it's got the crackles as well now if you only wanted the crackles you can just crumple it up and just open it back up and leave it like that. Don't have to use an embossing folder. If you don't want it to have crackles in it, you can just emboss it with the embossing folder. Okay, so everybody all right with that? All right, down to the post box. Lovely. We're off for Jamie's birthday card. I haven't done one yet. All right. I see. So I'm going to take one of my 14 by 20s. So I hope you're all here. My iron is on, so that's on linen, which is quite a high heat. It's no steam, no water in it. It's just a dry iron. Ah, right, lovely. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of copy paper, just thin rubbish stuff. Okay, you don't have to be too precise and too worried about that bit. I'm going to place my 14 by 20 card in there and I'm then going to place my wax paper onto there okay and then I'm going to seal it over with the other piece of paper okay so that's a folded piece and I've just sandwiched the wax paper onto the piece of 14 by 20 and I'm just sealing that up so there's no wax now going to get on my iron and that's why we made sure that that was like that. Yep, if you can please share this. So if you've got a glass mat or anything like that, your iron won't touch that, it won't damage it. Um, not really going to be touching the mat because the thickness of this will stop the iron touching it. So if you're worried about that, don't worry, but you're not going to be on it long enough for it to warp this, okay? So it depends on what mat you've got. You might have one of the, the non-stick heat proof ones, so that's fine. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put the iron down. One, two, three, four. And I'm putting up quite a bit of pressure on it. And I've just gone up, down, up, down. And that was it. Okay, then I'm going to open it up. And remove the wax paper. Now you can reuse that wax paper again and again. It'll add less wax paper every time you use it. And you, or you can crumple it up again and do a bit more. I'm actually going to put that to the side for maybe another time. But if you can see now on that green bit of paper, you can see sort of a design. And that very same, the opposite design is now on this piece. And Gavin has already done this piece because we didn't want to be carrying the hot iron up and down the stairs. So this is this little piece here. 
So now this is down to you now which way you want to do this. Okay, this is actually circle. Now I did the wax thing with a piece of paper with a circle cut out and I actually went through but it does warp your card. Okay, so this is why I'm doing it on a separate piece this time. Is everybody okay with that? I'm sure you can follow on again if you or if you're stuck somewhere please let me know and then I can sort that out for you as well and I can tell you where to go next. So now I've have um three dies but really it's three dies that are in sequence from my large nesting dies but I'm gonna take out the middle one okay I'm gonna put it back back with my set and that's the reason I wanted to do that and literally when you put the largest one out of the two on that 14 by 20 piece you probably got about a centimeter each side to a centimeter and a half each side so that's roughly your guide so it's about a, a, a finger a, a finger thickness not a finger thickness <laughs> okay either side and we're going to take the biggest of the two dies and we're going to cut that out okay so that's what we need to do now okay so i'm going to get this ready now and then gavin will probably run up so that i can cut his as well okay now you could just ink the whole piece but you might want to use the rest of it on a different color use different color inks on the background but I am actually going to just do the circle and then Gavin will probably come up now so I've actually cut that circle out which is the larger circle die that I had which is about four inches wide maybe a little bit longer so there we are, Gavin's upstairs and he's now taking the large die and the machine downstairs with him. So you're just cutting out the circle like that, at the, out at the top there. Oh right, I thought it was cutting the frame. Okay, no. So you're actually cutting it out to the 14 by 20. A thin finger. <laughs> or a little stubby sausage one like me. Hi Bev again. Hiya Deborah. So now I've got my little circle there, okay, and the rest of it is you, which I'm actually just going to put to the side with my wax paper, just so that I've got it there. Now, now you need to choose the inks that you want to use, okay. Now I've got a few colours. Now some people get confused with inks, okay. Some people really do get confused with inks. You can use water reactive ones in the Harmony. You can use Memento dye based. You can use distress inks. You can use distress oxides. If you add any artiste dye based ink pads, you can use them. You could even use um, the opaque um, ones that are similar to that but opaque. Gavin's got them downstairs so he's going to be using them. Okay so it doesn't matter what sort of ink you're using as long as it's not a permanent ink. So as long as it's dye based or opaque or pigment you'll be fine. Okay so Okay, so now I've got this and I'm actually going to use a pink and a blue and that will make a, like a, a light purple. If you just want to use one colour in your, then that's fine, okay? So I could just get a purple and just do a purple, I could just do the blue, I could just do the pink. That's not a problem at all. Okay, now we then need a distressing tool, okay? It can be your eggs. It can be your finger daubers. It can be your distressing oval brushes 
which Gav, that's what Gavin is using downstairs. You can use your bigger brushes. This is down to you again, okay? Not a problem. You could even use your wooden handle ones with your little sponge forms, okay? And that could be the square one, the round ones. It doesn't matter, okay? Tim Holtz, they are distressing stoner. Hi Sue. So that's fine. You can use them, no problem at all, okay? They are dye based, okay? So that's fine. It's not a problem at all. So I'm actually going to use my smoothies today, but I could use my finger daubers, I could use any distressing tools at all, okay? Or brushes. So I'm going to take one for my pink, which I've got there, and then I got one for my blue. Well, that's more the blue colour, so that's fine, okay? And instead of going directly to there, I'm actually going to pick up some of that, dab it down onto my mat, and I'm going to go around. Because we want that background to be a little bit Um, softer really because we're going to be putting a bigger image on but it doesn't matter if it does get a little bit darker because we can do things with it okay and in fact I'm going to go right in because this is a, a nice soft color and like I said you can go directly in but you're more likely to scratch the wax with the, the ink pad okay because what you got to think if you've 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 transferred the wax from the wax paper to this card now okay and you might not see a lot at the moment with the pink but when i start putting that blue on top it'll completely pop okay so if you've got a darker pink you might already see the pattern and you might be happy with just that one you might be happy with just that one color okay that's entirely up to you okay so that's the one color and then i'm going to take my blue because i just want to by adding a blue in i'm literally just making my own sort of tone of purple really okay so when i do that now you can actually see that, that is really popping out now you should be able to see that pattern lovely okay and it's amazing you can you can do this with any of your embossing powders but embossing folders sorry um so yeah so wax paper is a good thing to use now some cereals i know still have wax paper as they're in a liner that holds the cereal but i know a lot of them have gone over to plastic i'm hoping that because of the plastic issue they will all go back to wax paper again and then you wouldn't you could even then just do that you could just pick up your cereal box every time you finish it take the cereal liner out and use that okay but it does need to be wax okay so so that is my ink on there i'm just gonna seal that up a minute that's my ink pads done so I'm sure you can see that so I'll hold that up there just so you can see it but I'm sure you can see that when I was actually doing it so you can see there's roses in there but it's sort of a little crackling between them as well so you get sort of two different effects and the thicker the pattern on your on your your embossing folder the more the cracks will actually show but I really really love that it's, it's quite vintagey but it's quite subtle and soft so it's it's lovely okay and don't forget then before you proceed anywhere else take a bit of blue cloth kitchen towel soft towel or stuff like that and because the ink might sit on the wax just give that a little bit of a wipe over because you've got to think it is wax okay and so once you've given that a little wipe over any ink that's on it would then re be removed okay and then we're going to clean up our mat so always clean up your mats before you can continue 
or you're going to end up with um, colour all over your cards and stuff like that. So if you've got a green mat like this and you've got a, a non-stick mat as well or a blending mat, you could have even brought I could have even brought the blending mat in, done my inking over the blending mat, and then removed that then to, to do my cards and everything on you, which would have meant it would have been nice and clean. Okay. But we all have our different ways of working and that's mine really. So I'm a bit of a little fuss pop to when I'm working on my own to get it right. So as you can see, that is that card and we've just done this circle, okay? And that is actually the size of that black circle there, okay? Meshes are really subtle. Yes, they are. The, the oval blending brushes are quite amazing and they really does, you can really get that nice soft blend of the two colours. You could even leave a, a, a vin... I'm getting the word wrong now. It's not a vinaigrette, it's a... Because <laughs> that's nice on a salad. <laughs> Hiya, Dania. Hiya, Peter. How are you? Yes, you have, Peter. And they should be with you shortly, I would have thought. Okay, so that's the card we're going for, and that's the bit we've just done. Okay, so, anti-static pad. So, hi, Dania. Vignette, that's the word I was thinking of. So you can put one colour in all the way around, and then just vignette around the edge with a different colour. But remember, we're going to be putting a frame on as well. So you need to come in a little bit so that you do get that. Okay, so I've just tapped anti-static on it. We're fine, thank you, Peter. We're very fine, how are you? So, done that. So the next thing I need to do is take a black ink pad, clear embossing powder. I'm just going to unplug my iron for now, but I will be using that a bit later. Don't want to burn myself. Okay. I know my arm went a bit close then. So I've now got my heat tool. So I've got my black one, Gavin's got my pink one. So that's that. Okay, so I've got my heat tool. I'm going to try and not hit the camera. Ha ha. Right, there we are. So I've got my heat gun. I've got my finesse. That's a waterproof one. You can use your alcohol proof one. You can use your memories dye ink pad. You can use your um, Versafine black ink pad. That is entirely up to you. Okay, and then we need to choose a stamp. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, one of the stamps from this magazine and this is an old magazine but I'm going to use that and I think I'm actually going to use the same flower that I used before and I'm going to just use this one. So you can use anything in you now, okay? But I thought for a sympathy card, um, flower would be nice. But obviously you could put a butterfly because butterfly as a different meaning to butterflies. <laughs> so I ask Gavin going in my drawers for a bit of scrap paper. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm just going to place that in my press to impress. Amanda, who's come on then? Who's come on that I've missed? It doesn't hasn't come up with Amanda on mine, but hello Amanda. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna hold it on with the magnets. I got three magnets, but I'm just gonna use the two. I'm gonna pick up my stamp. So you put your stamp face down with the smooth side facing up, and then you pick it up with the, the lid of the machine. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my clear embossing powder open ready. And I'm going to have a sheet of 
scrap paper so this is the one I actually used for sandwiching my paper just now not a problem at all okay and if you're worried about your powder sticking to that gen anti-static that as well tap off the excess powder anti-static powder and you go from there so the reason I've done that is because once I've stamped this I want to pour the powder on pretty quick okay so I'm going to ink up and this one does dry pretty quick to be honest with you so I will have to be very quick okay I'm just gonna go a couple of times grab that throw it on my piece of paper and throw my clean embossing powder on there okay so now you can see the embossing powder is on there and now the image has gone a bit pale and that's because my powder is actually stuck to that ink okay so just put my powder back in my pot put my waste bit of paper to the side cover my ink up and put that back in my drawer and that is the embossing done for that and then I'm going to clean my stamp when I'm at it so I have got my stamp cleaner here but for ease of use so I don't have to get the big machine out I tend to use it more for the bigger stamps to be honest with you than my big scrubber <laughs> I know Derry he's terrible Sometimes he does ask if he can have something out of a mind, so so that's not so bad. But sometimes it just goes in him. Okay, so that's that bit. And the stamp is clean. And now I'm going to put my heat gun on. And it might be a little bit loud at the moment. So I'm just waiting for it to heat up. Ah, Amanda from... Kent, right, yes, I know Amanda. Hi Amanda, how are you? And then as I heat it, you can see that the line art is changing colour. And it's the colour I've used to stamp with. So if you wanted a line that was red, blue, pink, purple, you could stamp with that, with that colouring pad. And then put clear embossing powder on and then we need to leave that cool a little bit okay and then once it's cool we can brush off the powder the anti-static powder with a little bit of an ink with a little bit of tissue again okay so that is that but now I want to so if we look at the both of them you can see my flowers are paler and then my leaves are more green okay and my flowers look more pink and the way I did that because we've used dye base pigment base uh, distress oxides distress inks um, opaque ink pads they're all water based basically and what we can do then is I'm just going to take a little bit of tissue So as long as it's something that's absorbent, like kitchen towel or blue tissue or toilet roll or you know anything that's absorbent, and I'm actually going to put some water down on my mat like that so I can pick it up from there. I'm just going to take a brush. This could be your Phil Martin water brush that comes with the water pens. Um, it could be a normal painting brush, a little artist painting brush. It can be any sort of brush that will just transfer the water to your card. So I'm just picking up some water and I'm just spreading it in where the petals are. Okay. So I'm just going in, picking up the water. And it's surprising now how this even though this is super smooth and I usually say don't use water on it, it's surprising it doesn't actually take up too much and it doesn't bubble the card. So leave the water sit on it a bit and then just press your tissue to it and if you want that to go a bit lighter go back in again um, stamp cleaner um, I tend to just use water for stamp cleaner um, 
but we do a little pad which we use for our gilding flakes and it's basically um, a, a, a pad that come from a big pad of um, a stamp scrubber and you just use that's okay no problem I'm just gonna keep going with the water in your Gavin so to have to so you just heat your embossing powder and that Gavin's actually using um, a black ink and a black embossing powder so so Gavin's will look a little bit different to mine because I think the the black powder he's using, embossing powder he's using, has actually got a, a little glitter glint to it as well. So I'm just washing out all the bits I want to be a little bit lighter so that I can add a, a little bit of colour into it in a bit. Okay. There's also some more stamp cleaning. Yeah, Gavin have ordered more stamp cleaning pads, um, which hopefully will be in quite soon so uh, but we do sell the little black pads which are rough one side and it's got a spongy the other side and we tend to use them for our gilding flakes um, you can wet the one side or wet your stamp use the rough side of it into your stamp and that cleans all the ink and everything out of the stamp and then you dry it then with the sponge side of the of the pad okay so now that card is actually so the images you can see is as a lot lighter okay and because it's a lot lighter it means we can bring our inks in again okay so I'm going to bring in a green for my leaves and that's all I'm going to do is just tap a so you can't see that green because obviously I've got a green mat but it is there okay I'm gonna take a little bit of water on my brush have we ordered small pearls? I think we've got pearls. I'm not sure if it's pearls or gems we've had in already. We had some in the other day. So I'm just wetting my brush with, picking up the color and then I'm just watercoloring the color into those. And your pattern will show lovely through this. So now you can see my leaves are green. Okay, so if I want my flowers now to be more pink or maybe a little bit of purple, so I clean my green off, off there. Clean my brush from the green. I can then dab um, some color into my mat. So you can see that's a dark colour. So that's uh, seedless preserves in distress inks. I'm going to pick up some water again and I'm going to go in there and mix that colour down so it's a watercolour. Now you could go in with your Phil Martin pens now and actually colour in here or you can put a little bit of the pen down here and then pick up the with the water brush and colour that. Okay, but I'm actually going to go in now and just go over those flowers with a little bit of my seedless preserves in the Tim Holtz ink pad and there's numerous ones that you're using I know Gavin's using the opaque nice new opaque ink pads have you taken the colour off? what yeah. do I use to put the ink back on? Um, you can use the same ink pads that you've used to do the background no but what do I use? A, a... just a water brush and you dab your ink, your ink on your so Gavin's asking, how did I get the colour into there after he's, after he's lifted the colour? So that's very pale, that brown. So I'll go for the mid, middle, one, middle one. I'm doing, I'm doing the hair. All ah, right. All ah, right. Gavin's doing a, a different one. He's changing this card up completely. He's not making a. He's not making a sympathy card. So literally, and if I want that colour a little bit darker, I just go back in, tap a bit more down. So don't be afraid to use your ink pads for colouring. I just want this one to be just a little bit darker than the bigger one, because it's a different style flower. 
it's this one is more a rose and that one is more I don't know another another flower okay so now I have my and if I wanted to even I could even take that flick out a little bit from the center just put a little bit of color there as well so it's a bit darker in the middle so really don't be afraid with watercolors it'll actually help you along and they're easy to do and if you've made a mistake just take normal water go in dab it lift out the color again okay so obviously I'm going to wash that now so I'm cleaning my brush dipping in the water cleaning my brush and that's nice and clean so if I can go back over there so can you see that now that's that's got some lovely colors on there I'm just going to dab that a bit take out some of that color off Oop. so now I've got green flower green leaves I've got a light sort of purpley color flower and then the rose is a little bit darker so again slightly different to that when I took the color out of this one it was actually so pale and the pink just came through for so if different inks will react differently so that's why I was able to just leave that in there not have to watercolor it I did watercolor the green leaves though so I'm just cleaning my mat again okay so now I've actually cleaned my mat and that now will have a chance to dry to the side I'm going to put that to the side as well okay so how is everybody going now? Are you all okay? I'll put the ink pads away so it's all clear for you to see what I'm actually doing. I know we did have lots of gems in Saurus so I don't know if there was pearls in that the other day or whether it was just gems. Um, if you go on the website though they will be they will be within um, gems and that on the site so the outer die is the die I use to actually cut that circle okay so now I've missed a die and then I've gone and taken the next die so that's one that's okay Gavin I'm just explaining about the dies so so this is what we're going to be doing to cut a frame okay and that's the frame for this little black area here okay so that will be our next bit okay so once you've done your coloring and stuff like that which is really really nice I just love the patterns you get in it and it really looks like you've really gone to town with it it's really really nice I really really do like that okay so now I can move everything out of the way I'm bringing in my beastie boy again and some I'm actually going to use black again for this okay so you can cut a piece of whatever colour card you want the frame to be in. So you don't have to be black, it can be any colour you like. Especially if you're not doing the sympathy card or thinking of you card, you know it can be it can be any colour you want, okay? So I've cut a little bit of black there. Oh, what am I doing? I need that. It's the scissors I don't need. Cut a bit of black. I'm going to pop that onto my white cutting board. I'm going to place the one die there, which is the bigger one, and I'm going to place my smaller one next to it. And so that they don't move, I'm actually going to use some low tack tape, which I've got loads over stuck on my handle. I'm actually going to just tape them together. Got another little bit here. I'm just going to do that okay and then I'm going to put my grey board on top so of course your you will know your sandwich for your die cutting I'm 
and you might have a big shot a gemini you know it doesn't matter what machine you're using it's just use the sandwich for cutting your thin dies and that's that Gavin's getting a really good workout today because he's up and down the stairs getting different things all the time. So the circle can be used for something else itself, which I will put in my one from the sample I made. And then that is my frame. <laughs> Gavin's absolutely worn out now. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll hit on it if you have. And I use those two pieces of tape with Better give him the plates as well, and I always going to be stumped. Okay, so as you can see, I don't tend to keep much of it, but I am a stickler for keeping bits of black because black is always a colour I run out of. So if I got a bit, I keep it. <laughs> and I've got a big box of black, all little bits, so I can matter layer sentiments and cut little butterflies and cut little flowers and stuff like that out. Okay, so I've now got my frame. If you can't see that, there we are, there's my frame. Okay, lovely. And while Gavin is still here, I'm going to cut him some string. I'll cut him some slack, just some sling, string. Sling. I'm going to cut him two pieces, which are roughly about the length of an A4, about 30 centimeters. And you'll, you will need two of them. Okay, but we're only going to use one for this card. Okay, because I'm going to continue to do the second card after this, which will be similar sort of things, just doing different layouts and stuff. So it's a good practice run, this is. And there's your two pieces of string, Gavin. There we are. So I have two pieces of string. One I'm going to use for this card, or one I'm going to use for the next one. Okay, and we're going to be using the same size dies as well, so in the next card as well. Okay, so that is that, that is that. Frame. Just the frame you need, yeah. 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 Any rubbish can go in my little rubbish box. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do now with this, I'm actually going to take... Uh, You're going to take the blue ink pad that I used and the same pad that I used with the blue so obviously whichever pad you use you can do that so if you want to you can just go directly onto the ink onto the string with the ink pad but then that's going to get quite juicy okay so I like to go in there and just rub it along the the natural string it doesn't matter if you don't get to the edge, but this goes on nice and smooth then. You're actually changing the colour of your string then, okay? So if you want something else, colour it. You'll find that some silk ribbons won't colour. Or especially ones that are um, acrylic, sometimes they won't colour at all. But it's worth trying. And I'm just going along and I'm just adding a bit of colour and it doesn't matter if there's bits of white showing of the string or a natural cord. You might have the same colour cord you want and that's not a problem. Okay so that that is my bit of string now and it's sort of coloured a bit of a little bit of blue. Okay, I'm just taking a bit of kitchen towel or cloth and I'm just running down there just to remove any excess ink that might be on there. Okay. Anybody got any questions while I'm by you doing this? I'm washing my while I'm washing my mat down. I can answer them some questions then. Move my string off my mat to the bottom. Spritz it with water. And I'm going to use my kitchen towel to just 
clean up that blue ink. So the good thing about this sort of card is, is you can actually do lots of sort of your wax papers, your ironing and stuff like that and then ink the whole background and just cut what you want out of it. So you could do them in squares, ovals, circles, um, hexagonal things, you know, you can do whatever shape you want, you know. It's your imagination that's going to take this card a little bit further, so, and that's what matters, really. So, that is the string coloured a little bit, and yes, there's little bits of white on it, and I'm not worried about that. I quite like that, because it gives a little bit of definition when we wrap it around this little frame. Okay. Which brings me back I know I didn't do it on this one, that's alright So it's up to you, you can either wrap that around there I don't know why I keep having two, it's because I did two cards the last time You can wrap that around it to give you an extra look on this card Just so there's an extra something on there, which I quite like So first thing I'm going to do is turn this frame around so it's the back it's the back end of the die cutting and I'm going to place some little pieces of red liner okay so this is red liner tape if you've got really really sticky tape double-sided tape then that will be fine as well so I'm literally just taking one little bit there Two little pieces there, so this is just to hold the string there really, to help us along. Okay, so I've just put three pieces and it's taken up about, I don't know, five, six centimetres around. Okay, so I'm going to take the first, and I know some of you struggle with this, rub it down with your finger Rub your nail across the top of it and it should release the, the red line apart from it. So that's my first bit. I'm going to remove my second bit as well. And I'll remove my third. I love my red line, it goes around corners easy. <laughs> yeah, you only need to do sort of a little area though. Because literally we're just going around Hello, Mr. Exercise. I got Mr. Motivator here. He's up and down the stairs like anything. So, Gavin, I'm going to take the red liner. Okay. And what I'm doing, I've just stuck the corner onto the one side of the red liner, or the end. And then I'm just going to wrap a bit around. And you can wrap it close together. Or you can wrap it further apart. This is entirely up to you. Okay. Obviously, the further apart you do it, the more it might go around your your frame. The closer you wrap it to each other, the less it'll go around your frame. And it doesn't mean you can't cut your string either. Yep, just three bits about two centimeters away from each other. Right. And there we are, so I've just done a bit and I've finished, so I'm just going to cut the end there. I'm going to bring that back around and stick it onto the back of there. So as you can see now, I've just got that nice little decorative sort of thing there and it goes lovely. It's just an extra little something there for this machine. All right. Okay, so that's that. And you can put it to the left hand side, right hand side, it's entirely up to you. Okay, you can even have it at the bottom if you want, prefer it. So it might be a nice area that you think, oh, that'll be nice on there. And you can just do that. Okay, and that's all I'm doing with this then, is taking my tacky 
original glue the Anita's would be good as well or probably even the Cosmic Shimmer if you got that I'm just going to go around a little bit of glue make sure I don't want too much on there because it will lose out if you put too much okay but if you think you put too much on it take a bit of tissue hold it down tap it under that and that also spreads your glue around so it'll take a lot quicker to what you stick in it to as well but you won't get so much oozing but make sure it doesn't move when you do that and then I'm going to place that on directly onto the frame where it should be and it's the same size so you should be able to get right from edge to edge and if you have got any of this glue it's lovely because you can just you can use you can probably use your old purpose I would think but it will take longer to dry on the string bit so now I have that put together okay red liner does go around easy don't it doesn't it especially the really thin one it is a lot easier to control I think if you've got any glue on there just take it apart you could have even done this on a bit of scrap paper so you wouldn't have to keep cleaning it you could just take the scrap paper to the side and then that is my bit there so that is my main image and it's actually there ready to go okay and then that is what the card is going to be like so we need to stamp the sentiment on there so with the card there how's everybody going hoping I'm going slow enough for you Gavin's frantically colouring or was frantically colouring in just going to pop them on there so that the opening is to this side and I'm going to um, find a sentiment now I have a small thinking of you on this one congratulations birthday wishes thank you just because just a note to a special someone okay so that's what's on this one but if you want this to be um, a card for sympathy then find a sentiment for sympathy and just stamp that okay but I think with this one because I've got a thinking of you one there which I like to put on sympathy cards I'm actually going to put um, thank you on this one just to say thank you because obviously with people who have been looking after family members as well if if a family member has passed away then it might be nice to just send them a little thank you card as well so I'll make this a little thank you card I'm just gonna pop that there on the bottom bottom right hand corner can you make sure it's square and there's lines on this press to impress which we have ordered today so they're back in the warehouse so we should we're waiting for them to come back in now because Gavin placed the order today for them so fingers crossed they won't be long coming in I'm using my um, my waterproof die my finesse waterproof by Spectrum Noir but you can use your um, you can use your Tim Holtz ones or your your Versafines, your Memories Ink pads, your Adirondack ones. And I can never say that name, so I probably said that wrong. And I'm sure Gavin will tell me if I have. <laughs> You're only just about keeping up Gavin because you're doing a marathon up and down the stairs as well. Okay, so I've now stamped that on the bottom corner. that to the side put my way yeah so 
I have got my stamp cleaner here just so people can see this there and yes I do need to give it a good clean now so I'll go and wash that under a tap or in some likely soapy water one day just to get rid of a lot of the ink in there and I'll wash and swill that out as well because they do come out and just to show you how it comes out squeeze the top onto the bottom the bottom comes away like that and the top tends to stay in there it is stuck in the top so um, just swill water through the top part under your tap like that and then the ink will just remove and then leave it upside down then so that it can drip dry and then this one just give it a good old clean okay so that's that and they are doing as well and they'll be in probably with the same time as the press to impress is okay so that is now that and now I'm going to place my topper onto there and I'm just going to get my all purpose because Gavin's got my other pot so I'll use this one so I'm just going to put that around not too close to the edge just wiggly 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 you could use your red line again to stick this down okay and I'm going to put the string so it's coming up to that corner because then it's got the thank you down there and then the, the string is going up that way I'm just going to place that nice and central and then I can even add and then I can even add pearls or something to that I can add a couple of pearls on here I can add a couple of pearls to the corner so you can decorate it to as much as you want okay and that is your nice little thank you or thinking of you one so like I said didn't put the string on this one but that was a good little practice for our second card if you wanted it on there but it does add that extra little something to that card really and it's just nice it's just a nice little something in fact I prefer it with the string than without the string but then if you're gonna put a couple of pearls on the frame that would work out just fine and there we are Gavin's just run upstairs and that is Gavin's little version of it so he's done the hair and the moon he's put best wishes and he's put the little brown string there okay so don't forget you can share if you've done these you can share your card uh, to Valley Craft Facebook page or just send Gavin a, a post uh, a message on messenger but that's to Valley Craft messenger because it's easier for him to transfer that photo onto the thing and if you don't mind the sharing it then just let us know when you send us the photo so so what do you think of Gavin's as well isn't that lovely it just shows is a little bit different and that'd be lovely for a for a little man's card as well okay so that's that one one down another one to go <laughs> so this is a, a bit of a, a crafting marathon but then we usually have a a three hour class so this will probably take a lot less than three hours to do these okay but there we are, so that's those cards. How will you all go in with them? So there we are. Is everybody okay? Everybody's so quiet. They're all so quiet. Why aren't you like this in class? <laughs> Not that you're noisy in class, but you usually get a lot more out of it in class. That's why I miss class. Because it's so much nicer to be face to face and getting my cutches and my hugs from people and talking to people face to face. Really missing the social interaction. 
Yes, the second card is the one that Gavin's really been looking forward to because he's going to be using the fairy stamps that he had on the issue 83 of Creative Stamping, which is the fairies and the grasses and stuff like that. Now, I don't think we have any more of these, but please look on the website. Um, I don't know. I know Gavin just decided to do that because he liked the fairies. I miss a YouTube, uh, really am missing cutches. These virtual ones are nice, but they, they don't have the same effect. Really, really don't have the same effect. So this is a man's card now. And we're doing, um, the reason we're doing a sympathy card, or thinking of you card, and a man's card, is because when I asked last time if there was anything somebody wanted to do, Please let me know. Sarah, 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 can never, I always say the wrong one. Um, asked if we could do a sympathy card because of everything that's going on at the moment. All oh, right, we have still got a few copies of that magazine. So that was Creative Stamping issue 83. So apparently there's a few issues. We have still got a few issues of them. Okay. So we've now finished with your clear embossing powder. You won't need that now for the second card. Okay. You will not need that for the second card. So we can clear up two things. That's my embossing powder away. Which also means I can put my... Oops, just wibbly wobbled. I can now put my heat gun away. Quite a good one, love the class. Yeah, and no. <laughs> it's not Sarah's fault, it's Sarah's imagination on what we could do that have brought us to this lovely day of crafting together. In a nice environment and to take our mind off everything that's going on in the world until I just mentioned it. <laughs> so there. So this is what we're going to do now. Okay. So we're going to do a man's card. Okay. Now, I think I did get stamps out earlier on that I thought about using. Now where did I put there? Aha! So this was an old never too early for wine. It's a Saturday. I'm surprised we didn't have wine for breakfast. So I'm actually going to use this old magazine stamp. It, it is an old one and I know if Gaynor is still watching, hi Gaynor if you are, she'll probably use the lighthouse just like I'm going to use the lighthouse today. But I'm also going to build a scene around that lighthouse hopefully. Because I think it'll fit within our circle. Okay. And we're going to do a sky around it. And we're going to put some birds in as well. Okay. So there's birds flying around it as well. So. <laughs> that's what I said Deborah. Never too early for wine. So because I am using the uh, lighthouse. I could put the man in there. I could put the sailboat in there put the seahorse in there I could put anything in there for a man okay as that's quite manly but I'm also going to use this folder okay and we're going to do a similar thing with the wax paper again okay but we're going to do it slightly different because I want you to have these nice little areas around which looks like it's part of a torn map of, of sorts okay so this is what we're going to do okay so I'm going to show you how to do that so I've shown you how to wax on a paper, die cut it, and then ink. But this is going to be slightly different. Okay. So, an A4. <laughs> I don't know, Gainer. It was just something in the back of my mind saying, Gainer might use the lighthouse. But I really don't know why. <laughs> and again, I would like to thank everybody for the comments on my mum 
from yesterday and then um, obviously um, being at the hospital I had to come before the craft along um, but mum is doing a bit better now in hospital she's down at the Heath uh, she is on a ward now so again we're folding an A4 piece in half on your scoreboard if you're on a normal scoreboard centimeters 15 centimeters and we're going to keep it as an A5 card okay so I would like to thank everybody and just let you know that she's scheduled to go down for um, a I was going to say heart transplant then <laughs> it's not heart transplant it's a a little uh, pacemaker that's the one so she will have to be um, very careful and rest up for four weeks when she is released in maybe two three days time so thank you very much for everybody for their notes and stuff so we've got our folded card so that's our A5 card okay A5 15 by 21 when it's folded and then we still have our piece of white card which is that's 15 by 21 that is 14 by 20 okay so that's your 14 by 20 okay lovely so we've got our card base and we're going to pop that to the to the back out of the way so that it doesn't get dirty and we're going to take our piece like this and we're going to take a bit of wax paper okay and I just need it to be and not so not too worried about how it rips because we're going to be doing something a little bit different with this in a minute yeah so again crumple it up I think we'd all like to be by a lighthouse at the moment though because then we'd be down by the beach somewhere or on a nice cliffs a cliff surface enjoying the wet enjoying the sun and the wind through our hair if we had any I haven't so what I'm doing now I'm just roughly ripping around the edge and it is smaller than the page I'm actually using okay Well, some of it will already be quite ripped anyway, but what I want is for it to be like that. Okay, so it's actually going to be shorter and shorter that way. Okay, and it'll take a little bit more off the end there. And you can come right in, you can make, you know, like a, a big tear out of a map or stuff like that. So this is. That's it. I'm going to take a big chunk out of the top there as well. So that's that. Okay. So I've now got that there. So like I said, if you just want that to be wrinkled. Um, well, the one I've got here, the cut right wax paper. Um, I think we usually buy this from Creative Expressions. And I've got to be honest. I've had this for years and it's supposed to be for putting between your die and your card. Um, I know we had one box of it left the other day, but whether somebody already bought that, i got no idea. Um, but we can get more. And in fact, I'm not sure if Gavin has bought, ordered more. Not sure. So I think he has done a Creative ex Expressions. Okay, so now that's that. And I'm going to take my wave embossing folder. I'm just going to go on the big area there. So I've got nice big waves going through there. And of course, because it's a hard, a bigger, bolder surface and pattern, I will get more of that pattern on everything. So again, I'm putting it through. 
grey board so even though my boards are smaller I'm only doing that piece so I'm just gonna do that uh, brown mat and again I'm still cheating I'm using my big shot plate it's not cheating really it's just using what I've got here I'm just gonna go through I haven't stuck it to my mat looks terrible with all those tape pieces all over my things doesn't it okay so I've now done that piece and Gavin have already done this bit for his and I think Gavin used uh, a leaf die a leaf embossing folder which had all the one side was less veins and then this side was a lot more veins of the leaf so that's what Gavin's got so now I've got my parchment there and I've got my big waves going my parchment, it's not parchment, it's wax paper here. Oh, my dimple. Okay. So that's that. So I've now embossed that. So you'll be pleased to hear that's the last of your embossing with a folder. You will be die cutting, so you will need your machine for die cutting in a bit okay and we will need your red liner tape in a bit as well and your other piece of string but first of all we're going to place this in our little sandwich again with our piece of card Okay, so I'm just going to place that in. in there. I'm going to put it at an angle as well, so I've got that there and that there, and then I've got that big gaps around as well. Okay, so you can make it so it's a little bit closer to the edge, but you don't want the wax paper to cover the whole bit of that white paper. And this is the piece that's 14 by 20, not your folded piece. Okay, I'm going to place that over. I'm going to put the iron on. It shouldn't take too long to heat up. And then while I'm waiting for the iron to heat up, I'm going to choose what colours I'm going to use. So I've actually used blues on this one, but because I'm, I don't know now, do I use brown on the back? Or do I, no, because it's got waves. I will we'll go with blues again, I think. Shall I have a look if I've got blues here? Yeah. And if I haven't, then I will go with browns. Yeah. Right, well, I might go for a brown then. Tea dye, brush corduroy, and I've also got tea dye. I've got tea dye, I've got a chocolate which is a nice darker brown, and then I've got a brush corduroy. But I could even have seal brown as well. But I'm also going to use my yellow, so I think I'll use yellow and brown for the background, and then I'll can add a bit of yellow into the, the sky then when I do blue later. Okay. Ooh. Oh, which one? Which one? Which one is darker? Which one is lighter? And that's a lightish one. So the tea dye is light. So this is just scrappy. That's really dark. So I think I will leave the seal brown one out. Brush corduroy. Oh, that's sort of a golden brown. So I think I might use that one actually. And then the chocolate one. It's very pale, so I'll leave that one out. So I say we've got scrap bits of paper, and that's why I never throw out scrap bits of paper, really, because you can check which what the colours are really like. So I'm using brush corduroy in distress inks, and I'm using the lemon lemon tonic in the water reactive harmony. But you could use the opaque ones as well. Okay, so my iron is up to temperature now. So I'm going to remove this card out of the way a minute. I'm going to put it back with my folded card at the back and then we're going to continue to iron. I have one, please. So iron is hot, down on there, put a bit of pressure, up one, down two, up three, and down four, and that's done. I might usually find just going up, down, up, down. 
slow motion actually works lovely. And, oh my, oh that's a nice pattern. Surprising how many different patterns you get just from using your wax paper. It's amazing. Okay. No, oh, what was stuck on there? Okay, so I was stuck on there, still have some glue on there, so that stuck to my I ironed it flat. <laughs> right. So now I have my bit of A5 and it's got all the waxy stuff on it. And I can see all the swirls and everything on there. And you probably won't be able to see that from there until I start putting the colour on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my smoothies again. Um, I've got one for the brown, oh, that's more of an orangey brown. Yeah, I'll use that little one as well. Okay, so yellow first. Is everybody okay? Everybody watching or following on or so I'm just taking it from there and I'm actually going to just go straight into the middle there. And because there's wax on it, it does tend to move your inks around a little bit more. Whoa, look at that. Can you see the pattern coming out on here now? So I'm literally caught in the whole of the card. And if you're afraid to put your fingers down because you you think you might be picking up um, the colour on your fingers so you don't get fingerprints, just use a bit of card and you can do that. Okay. Oh, that's lovely. I don't know if you can see the pattern on it. Okay, but remember to then unplug your iron as well so that you don't get burnt and move it away from your arm. <laughs> Light as colours first, yes Gavin. Thank you. Light as colours first and literally I'm coating the whole of the card really. But I'm going to leave a, a vignette through the middle of this one. But then you can also see, you can see the edge of the, where the wax wasn't. What colours are you using? Can I take the... Yeah, lightest colour first, yeah. Yes, I did answer. You must have already been coming up when I answered. So you didn't hear me. Because you're a little bit behind me and you... Gavin's wondering why I didn't answer him about the lightest colour first. What I did, but it must have been as he left the downstairs to come upstairs. I think it depends on how dark your colours are that you're putting on as well to how much the oval blending brushes will put down. So don't try tapping it off on a mat either when you're doing this. You, you really do want it to be quite a punchy background. Okay, so I'm just going in and then I'm going to hold this up to you now with just the, the yellow on it, just so you can see, just make sure you don't crease your card, although that would add to the effect. I don't know if you can see the pattern on there. Okay. I think Gavin's enjoying himself down there. <laughs> okay, so you can actually see the pattern, I think. I'll wiggle it a bit. Maybe yeah, you can see it, yeah. I'm glad you could see that. Couldn't see it on my camera too well, but you can see it there. So you can see you get that darker sort of plain area of your card around the outer edge and that'll become more now when we start doing your darker colour. Okay so I'm now going to take a darker colour and I'm using 
brushed corduroy in the district in Timolt's Distress Inks. But obviously we've got 37 colours in the um, opaque ones. Have a stack going around the edge like that. You can actually see. But that's now picking up the outer edge. So it really does make it look a lot more like a, the edge of a map or, or something like that. I'm just going to come in a little bit, so, so don't forget we need a, a bit of a vignette in the middle. So you can use a background, you could um, stamp a background with your Versamark and then leave it for about 30 seconds and then go over your super smooth with some inks and that will actually bring out um, the pattern that you've stamped because it'll resist on the watermark or the verse mark or the, the perfect medium. I'm just going around making the outer edge darker. It does really blend well because of the wax. So you can really see the pattern coming out now on this on the edges of this card. And if you want this to resist when you're doing, um, if you're using Versamark with your stamps, then you could actually um, just take your little sponge like this, put some Versamark around the edge before you start inking up, and then it should resist a little bit and leave that perfect sort of line there really. You could even tear a bit of paper, put the torn paper there and go like that with a Versamark or perfect medium. Just trying to think of options for you to do if you haven't got wax paper at the moment. But wax paper is the easiest one because you can get the texture from your embossing folder as well. Which is really, really nice. So there we are. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So now, without adding any more ink, just going to go around the upper edge like that. That's lovely. It's going really well. Okay. Darker down there. So there, so I'm quite happy with that. A little bit more colour on the corner there. And if I want to do, I can go in and make it a little bit darker. I could get a darker brown and make it a little bit darker. But I am really, really happy with that. And what do you think of that then? See, it's quite nice, isn't it? It's lovely. See, so I've just left a, a vignette. Thank you for that word, Gavin. Mm. Being able to read that word is a lot better than trying to remember it. <laughs> so now I have that there. How are you going getting your colours on? Is your colours on going on lovely? Who's actually crafting along? I know Gavin is, and I know Donna probably is. Who else is crafting along? Or is everybody gonna, or is lots of you gonna watch it and then craft along maybe later? So I'm taking some water now, okay? And I'm just sprayed it into my hand and I'm just leaving it, I'm just causing drips. Basically. Oh, as Julia says, happy clappy. And I do like that little term of Julia Watts. So I've just splashed that on. And now I'm just going to take a, a bit of kitchen towel or blue tissue. I've left it a couple of seconds on there. And then I've got those little splatters on mine as well. I 
Ah, Richard, knitting and crafting. Is Gavin happy clapping? Just watching, sorry, go making pie for dad for tomorrow. No problem, love. It's about doing what you want to do, whether it's following, whether it's ink, inking and doing everything with us, you know, because this video will go on YouTube as well. So it'll be there for prosperity and um, it'll also you'll be able to even be able to access it from our Facebook page where the live is playing from now so I've just literally cleaned that and now I've got that there so that is that piece okay so that's my mat a little bit cleaner than it was again it seems to be coming cleaner and cleaner every time I do it which is also always good <laughs> Although I've cleaned it and I need to um, colour my string. So there is a couple of ways of colouring your string as well. I did say you can go like that, you can rub your ink pad on there. The other way of doing it is taking your ink pad, putting your string over it, putting your blobby thing down on it and then pulling the string through. Okay. And you can do that a few times and then what that's doing then it's colouring your string but it's not actually dirty in your mat so that's another easy way of doing it okay and I'm just gonna take a cloth or a bit of kitchen towel or something and just wipe that off and I'll take the SX excess colour off your string to make it easier for him, I've, I'm loving what I'm seeing. I've got my crafting area all set up ready, so it will be my first crafting technique when I get in there. Ah, lovely. Yeah, it's a good way of colouring your string, isn't it, Sarah? putting it on your ink pad and then just putting your tool on the top and then pulling it through like that. It does actually colour it nicely as well. Oh, don't worry about us, love you. So Dawn, I've just said, I know you do, bro. I will try and make a pie for you too. But don't worry about us. You know, you sort out dad, me and Gavin get out and about, whereas with mum in thing now they can't so so we might have to do a little bit more shopping now from Monday for them as well because mum's not going to be able to go to Caffili anymore so and we don't want Maddie going in and out if if she's staying there for a little for a little while all right so that is now my background and that is my string. So now I need to choose a colour piece of... Someone from Ballycroft said me like pie. Ah, uh, right. That is Donna. Uh, that would be Gavin. <laughs> it depends what pie you're making. Because if it's corned beef, he won't eat it. Because he's a, a flexitive a pest. Pesca flexitarian or something. Pesca fluitarian. In other words, he's a pescatarian, but every so often he eats something that shouldn't be eaten by a pescatarian. <laughs> so that's that. And now I'm going to choose a colour for a background around you. Okay. So I could go with black. Oh, I could even go a little bit of water there. So I'm just going to look through my colour card now and see if I've got a nice chocolate brown. Got a nice craft card. Oh, what's that? Oh, why the? Not quite. So that's not good. Ooh, that's textured as well. So 
turn it out, do it. Good. Right, so I have bought a bit of this brown card, but it's too similar. So <laughs> he's a pest. <laughs> oh, you will be saying about you, Gav. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the colour piece of card to 14 and a half centimetres by 20 and a half centimetres. So that's when you choose your colour. Okay, and I'll leave that bit of craft card there because Gavin might be tempted to use that. So I know he did mention about using craft. I don't know. And then because it's too light for me, I want it to be quite more vibrant. I'm going to take that really dark brown that I had earlier that I decided against. I'm actually going to colour down the sides. So never be afraid if you've got a colour card that you're not sure if it quite goes. You can darken it up. You can really, really, really darken it up by just going around with a darker colour ink pad. Again, this is a dye-based one from Arthur's Companion, which we do. But you could use the opaque ones as well. And then just to darken that up, but just a little bit fraction more than that. I'm actually going to take an old black Memories dyeing pad. I'm going to just use the brown one. I'm just going to go over that. With a little bit of black as well so it's more a grey sort of black this is because it's, it's an old old ink pad but I never get rid of my old ink pads because if I wanted just a, a lighter background with a grey nice little image then I can use my old black ink pad to put to stamp grey so there we are so I'm just going around the outer edge with that there we are, and that's that. So now when I put that up to the card, so I'll give that a give that a bit of a wipe. That's a lot of black and brown ink there. So never be afraid if you got a red card and it's not quite as red as you want, and you've got a red ink, then go around with a red. A red ink with your smoothie if it's a matte and layer then what's the point in saying oh well I can't do that now I'll have to wait until I can get somewhere use another piece and ink it all up okay and then you'll see the difference there when I put that on there it's got a much darker edge to it okay and that was from that to that okay Ooh. Be Ooh, and Gavin's done a purpley one. Which he's going to do his happy clappy on. I've done my happy clappy. Oh. But it didn't seem to. It didn't lift. It didn't lift, it just left marks. Right. It was in the way. It did blob on there, but it didn't. didn't seem to lift. I'm just going to try and. Help Gavin with his blobby because I am a blobby. You, I can blobby it. And you just leave that yeah, down. See, I mean, mine didn't come out. Wax didn't show through as much either. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it is a little bit uh, showing a bit more. It just didn't put enough water down. So you really put mm. thick blobs on so it can penetrate the ink. Yeah. So if you're not getting enough blobbies through it. But no, it's lovely background. Okay. And um, what colour did you want? Because you can make it darker anyway. Well, I was wondering about a piece, a bit of craft. 
be craft, be craft, you want to be craft? Yeah, take a bit of black. Take a bit of black, come on. Too small, yeah, so I wonder. It's alright, my trouble. Alright, <laughs> okay. I got black. Got tons of video again. I bought a load of black because I was running. Oh, yeah, here we are. A big one. It's not safe home. Or it might be slightly bigger. It's 170 gram, I think. So. So there we are. Nice uh, so your colour piece needs to be 14 and a half by 20 and a half. Okay, and then when that's done, you can stick your background bit onto that. And I like to use my all purpose for that. So are you all enjoying this today? Is it a change from a Friday? <laughs> I think I would have be, would have preferred to have been doing this yesterday than being stuck in a hospital car park for was it five six hours? Because I wasn't allowed in with Mum because of the the COVID problems, the coronavirus. They weren't allowed, nobody was allowed in apart from the patient. So yeah, so, so I was sat in the car and getting blown around by the wind and the rain and the hail that was coming down yesterday was phenomenal. For one part I thought my car was going to actually move down the car park because it was blowing so much. It was crazy, absolutely crazy. Right, so so that is your background, and that is your folded card, and I'm going to put that folded card, that onto the front of my folded card like that. Okay, so that's my background. And at this point, it would be up to you whether you wanted it with that piece at the bottom or at the top. With that bit like that and I'm gonna go with that flatter bit at the top there so what I mean by the flatter bit is in the pattern I've got this little slopey bit there and then this bit is all more rougher so again some of these cards on Monday we will be doing some lucky dips with the receipts um, and whoever's receipt gets pulled out of the box will actually get a card. Um, I'm actually going to be going through a box of all my cards that I've done in the past as well. So if we've got enough, which I'm sure we will, you, we will see how many we're going to do and then do the rest for that as well. So we've done our frame, we've done this done our matte layer, we've done our waxy bit and our ink in, our, and our blobs with the water and we lift in that so full bleaching and that is on the front of our main card base. So the next bit we need to do now is to concentrate on our image area here. Okay so that's the frame and our white piece for our image. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it is hard not to be with her, especially knowing that she's got to go for um, the pacemaker, down for the op for the pacemaker tomorrow, and we can't go and see her before then. So we're all just phoning her now, just to make sure she's okay and stuff like that. So, so I've now got a piece of my stamping card. Glad you're liking it, Sarah, as well. I've enjoyed doing them as well and working them out, to be honest with you. I've got another piece of A5 card. This is still 300 gram. You could use 250, 200 gram. That's entirely up to you. Um, we are going to be counting some more packs up, so if they're not on the website at the moment, they will be 
uh, sometime on Monday. Um, or if you need more, they might be there. If they're not there on Monday in the day, they may be there for Monday in the night. So you can then order it for the following week. Because it is every Monday. And we, we mean this until everything is going back to normal. It'll be every Monday that we go into work. Um, going to be going into work every Monday from 10 till 12. So any orders you do from after 12 on a Monday through to um, Sunday night will be picked on the following Monday and then delivered out to you or posted or you can collect from the store with contactless pickup and that is every Monday okay so like I said we're going to concentrate on this getting this image right now so I'm going to take a piece of white 300 gram card and this is our super smooth again so stamping card and I'm actually going to be die cut in the circle again so I know the area that I've got so this is the large die of the two I used earlier you could make it a little bit bigger if you wanted to or you could even use a square piece a square die but remember we are going to be putting the frame on it as well so whichever die you use we need to come down either the next die or the next two dies from that Gavin will be up now for this okay now because I want to do the frame in the same color as my background bit there my mat my first matte layer it means that I have to cut my frame as well Gavin's here to cut his bits but if I cut my frame first then I can ink that up because most of you will be using your normal colour card which means mm. do that mm. oh, that tape's not good even pick one that works hey yeah yeah that one will work I'm just gonna pop that on there I could tape the other one but I'm gonna take a lucky guess and a lucky dip and make sure <laughs> so this is now taking the wide die the widest die and two dies down but that depends on how wide how much of a step is from your on your set of circle dies and then Gavin can take all this because I won't need this again so we can take it down and use it as this Okay, Gavin, so that's that, and that, and the dies, and you've got enough black down there? Because you took an A4 piece, so you've used A5, yeah. so you've got the other So you need to take the machine the as largest, well. Largest. The largest one in white, and white. then the frame and in the, the colour one. Okay, and because my frame was darker, I'm going to ink that up. And then that'll give her a bit of time when I'm doing. Okay, so that's that. And remember, I use a bit of black as well. If I don't do that, then it's not going to match my outer frame. Okay, so that's that. And then that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to take a bit of tiny, tiny amount of tissue just to wipe that frame, just to take any excess of that black ink that's sitting on the top. And you can see the difference then between that and that. Okay, so that is my frame. And again, 
should really bring a scrap of paper in and do it on that because I'm constantly cleaning my mat. Constantly. There we go, that's that done. Okay, and then we're going to concentrate on doing the image in our little area. So this is another thing I wanted to show you as well because some people will have problems with some of the inks they're using when they're stamping their image. I'm going to place that there, place that there and then that's ready to do that. Right, so some of you will want to there was a dishy doctor when she collapsed in the in the pharmacy yesterday. The only male doctor that actually came to see what was going on and to help. So now I'm going to put my lighthouse there because I know my frame is going to cover a little bit of that. Okay, so I'll just bring it down a little bit more. Lovely. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up the stamp with the top and then this here I want to stamp it in the brown that I had in the background so in the background on that back piece because that's a lighter brown so I don't want it to be too dark so I'm going to take a bit of my scrappy paper that's the yellow mm -hmm take off some of that ink that I just used from the black because I used the same one for black as brown I'm doing that so I'm just removing that so that when I go into my brown now I'll only pick up that color okay and I'm gonna use my brush corduroy again okay and then because distress inks tend to puddle on some stamps so if I just went to the stamp now it puddles it all pools in little bubbles okay let me see if I can put that under there so maybe you can see a little bit you might be able to see the color don't I so when I go to stamp that like that it'll just move around it'll puddle because it's so it's got I think the Tim Holtz ones have got a bit more of a, an oily base to it as well but what I'm going to do I'm going to pick up the color on my spongy thing my smoothie and I'm going to tap it onto the stamp like that I take it over and ink it. If I want it a bit darker, just tap the ink again, go again, come over. Because the press to impress will hold it in place and it won't change, one move, I can go in again and I can go in again. So if your ink is puddling when you're stamping with it, get a smoothie or your Or your wooden sponge things pick up the color dab it onto your stamp and then do that a few times even your little finger daubers they would work as well and just go over your stamp and restamp it and then go over it again and restamp it again and this is the the best thing about um, the press to impress really I love it for that reason because I have found some stamps don't like some inks don't like surfaces of the stamps okay so I've now finished my lighthouse and again I'm just going to spit my stamp and just look at that just stamp with the opaque inks so there we are so Gavin oh. have just stamped that with the opaque inks so it's really come up well, and we've stamped it once, and then stamped it again straight after. No, I've and used that's... a different colour actually. Oh, he's used a different colour. Yeah. But you could stamp once, and then stamp again, move into the side, and then, then that would make it a lighter colour. They so this is. Lovely, don't but they? the opaque ones, because they're pigment, they don't puddle. Really and that nice. is the difference between opaque and dye based. The opaque ones won't. Some dye based ones either. It'll depend on the ink, how juicy it is, how new it is, and stuff like that. So that is my lighthouse. Oh, 
with my lighthouse now so I'm happy with the colour that that is and I'm happy with the colour of that but I want to put some sort of a sky behind that okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a bit of scrap okay and you can either rip little sort of ripples like that okay so you can see the little little moundy bits you can either rip it like that or you can take a scissors and just cut little wobbles like that or if you've got a stencil of a cloud you can do that okay and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take so there we are so I'm now going to take a little finger dauber for my blue and my yellow which are colours I've used before so I'm using the same dauber for them I've got my yellow here and I'm going to just grab my blue from the bear okay so I'm going to take up my blue just make sure I got a bit of colour don't want it to be too dark I'm just going to push it up off the paper onto the side of my onto my background of the image there and then I'll start getting these little sort of cloudy bits like that okay I'm going to come down and that's all you do then as you get near the, the lighthouse you miss where the lighthouse is and you just continue on through so you do this so I'm going to go right across here now so it looks a little bit different go across like that okay so you start getting sort of this cloud sort of effect in there I'm just going to come down here a bit more I think I think we'll turn that so we get a different pattern okay so that's there and because it's I want it to be sort of around a sunset or um, a sunrise I'm now going to take my yellow okay I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to use the bit that I actually cut off so that was the bit I used for the blue but I'm actually going to use this bit now for the yellow okay and I'm just going to turn that over and I'm going to use this down here all right so a little bit of yellow and then I'm just going to push up again like that. and then we'll start getting sort of yellowy sort of cloudy bits in there and because we've got the yellow from from there that's fine okay so I think you can see that if I just leave it there so I won't lift that up but you get all those nice little sort of cloudy sort of things like that so don't be afraid to ever just rip your, your paper and make little clouds because that adds that extra little something to it okay so I've now finished with the image and I've done the clouds and then if you have a fine line pen so you can just stamp images on you you could stamp one image um, and stuff like that you can just you know you could heat emboss it if you want it stamp it heat emboss it with powder you can do whatever you want like that if you've got one to watercolouring, use a piece of watercolour card and watercolour that as well. But I'm now going to take a little a little fine line pen and I'm going to make little birds. Okay. And that's all I'm going to do is like think of a think of a shape that's like two little cheeks basically and that's all I'm going to do I'm going to do one there 
one there and I'm going to do one there I really want it to look like that there, that there, you can put a little dot where the body should be okay so just to make you show you how it should look you just do a dot where the body is and then you just do and that's how you do your little birds so that just adds a little bit of interest into into that sort of area and I could even then with the yellow I could go into the into the lighthouse and just push a little bit of yellow out from the lighthouse as if there's a little glow there and that's and that's all I need to do so that is now my little image done of that okay okay so that's my image again then I have my yellow string so while all that ink is drying on there I've got my yellow string and I've got my frame okay which is my brown frame that's going to go around there but I need to put my yellow cord around this okay so I want to wrap that around there okay so again red line the tape or double sided tape whichever you find is best for you could use hot glue gun but I think it would just go everywhere so that's why I'm using the red line the tape any questions or people just following along and enjoying or just watching until later so you can go to your room and just do it at your own pace and pause it and continue on with it then as and when you want to again I'm just putting three little pieces around like that so you could wrap string right around um, the frame that, that would be completely up to you and I would just do it in small pieces like I have put little pieces around go around when you run out of string to use another piece of string go from that same bit of glue or tape and then go from there and go around and around and the only thing with this red line is the red sticky stuff sticks to you because it's anti-static so <laughs> Gavin's having great fun I think he's in the vodka that's why I wondered why he was quiet you in the vodka again <laughs> or the wine <laughs> thank you Sarah can I borrow you back your fine line now, please? yes I think that's the one you use just make sure it works before you take it just in case yeah yeah there we are so I'm just wrapping and wrapping and wrapping so he's literally just twisting and twisting and twisting it around and if you're lucky it'll land exactly where your glue is at the end <laughs> but you can pull them up so you can space them a bit more if you need a bit more space by just dragging them okay so now I've got my bit of yellow string that was uh, a natural colour and I had a big roll of that <laughs> I had a massive roll of that because I used to use it in the printers so but you can use any string at all you can use hemp cord as well jewelry cord you can wrap jewelry cord around it okay and again with that i'm just going to take my my original glue i try and pull less on it this time little tiny slither like that yeah that's plenty don't need to put it any more than that oh wish i put the string so i put it so it's down with a 
Yes. I'm going to put the string down where the lighthouse comes from out of the paper. Because then that will look like it's part of that design. Okay. So now I have that in place. There. Okay. So that is my image there. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in my card. Now this would be up to you. You could either place it on foam pads. So I'm, this one is landscape, so I'm going to do this one as portrait. I'm going to pop that in there. Oh, look at that. And I'm actually going to put that on foam pads. So when I've got foam pads that are quite large, I should just cut them up and this comes off a big roll and these are two millimeter thick foam pads but you obviously you can use three one two that's entirely up to you so I'm just putting some around the edge and putting one in the middle so it doesn't droop okay and then when I peel off because it's got a little lift area on these to lift I'm going to pop that in there. So I'm going to make the distance left, right and to the top about the same. Make sure my lighthouse is straight. And pop that down on there. So that is now my nice little image there. Okay. And then I'm going to do some sort of a banner. So... This one I actually used a die and just extended it and that was a couple of dies I had I think it was with either with a machine or a, um, a little set and I actually used this one and actually put it on there so I could have just cut that once and then cut it again on the edge and did one there but then I had to draw around it to make it bigger all right and cut that by scissors so that's how I ended up with my matten layer so for this one, I'm actually going to do um, like little, like a little banner one. So I'll show you how I do them as well. Okay. So to do my banner one, I am going to put them to the side a minute so I don't get ink everywhere. Put the lid on. So these glues are fantastic. They I never find that they block in the. In the lid because of the little rubber bun that comes with them. So, uh, so now I'm going to do my little banner. Okay, so to do your banner, you need to choose the sentiment you're going to use. And if I bring this thing in here, I can show you all the sentiments of the year. And there's a few um, sentiments on this one. Um, Hoping your day goes swimmingly, wishing you a beautiful day, let you your dream set sail, bon voyage, the world is your oyster. Happy birthday, mate. Have a great birthday. Ahoy there. A smooth sea, never made a skilled sailor. Happy anniversary, sending you this message to say, ahoy there. Always be yourself, unless you can be a mermaid, then always be a mermaid. Okay, so there's lots and lots of different verses and it's up to you where you're going to go for that. But I think I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for have a great birthday. And I'm also going to add sending you this message to say, uh, so I'm going to do sending you this message to say, have a great birthday. Okay. Can I have a red line, please? You can. I finished with the red line enough, so. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Looks lovely, that. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just put some scrap 
bit of the three underground card from where I cut the circle out earlier and that's not the one I didn't wax all my sheets so I only cut out the circle so this is the one I actually cut out for my lighthouse so it's no wax on it at all because you don't want that and I'm going to set up my sentiment I'm going to put the card in put my magnets on to stop that from moving and then I'm going to put sending you this message to say happy birthday now because they're really thin stamps they might move around a bit so what I'm going to do I'm going to pick them up first and then because there are lines on this mat I can actually look at the lines at the li in the light put my stamp along that line as long as I got it roughly where I needed it first of all, I can then move it. I need to say... Have a great birthday. Bring that up to the line just above it. Have a great birthday. There. So if I just push that down so it's all connected. And then again, I'm going to stamp again with the ink, just like I did with the with the lighthouse. I'm going to ink it with the the, the pad. I'll go down again, and then go down again. This bit isn't coming out as dark, so I'll just ink that bit up. And then I can go back over again because it's all the same colour now. Send you this message to say have a great birthday. And I quite like the, the fact that it's up and down like that because obviously it's a it's sort of a sea a sea sort of scene. A sea scene. Okay. I'm gonna leave those stamps on there for now and then I'll clean them a bit later. So that doesn't matter on the press to impress. And then I'm going to take my trimmer, which is behind me, on the bed. And I'm going to cut this flat. So the size of this sentiment is going to be three centimeters wide. Four deep top to bottom then you just managed to say have a great birthday and then I'm just having a look I got two and a half centimeters from the edge of the writing on the one side so I'm going to do that from the other side as well so that is 12 and a half centimeters which is that sort of size but I want to tag them as well I want to put a an end into them as well so so that was three centimeters by twelve and a half so then I need my color piece which is a bit of what I used earlier on for the background I'm going to cut that to three and a half centimeters Deep, which means I'll have half a centimetre either side or a quarter of a centimetre either side and that'll fit in there like that okay but I don't want to do anything with the length of it yet because what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the flat end of the white piece to the flat end of the brown piece Okay, and I'm going to get a pokey tool and I'm going to make a little hole just there or you can take a pencil so I know where I want to cut up to. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go from the point of the brown piece of card, not move in the white, up to the hole. And then from the 
corner of the brown up to the hole and then that will pop out there okay but I haven't actually got a brown um, edge to it so what I'm then going to do I'm actually going to pull it out like that okay so that the brown area there is double the amount that I have top or bottom so it's just a bigger amount okay I'm going to hold that there and if you want to you can actually cut that so it's up against the line so that you're flat there okay so the gap is double there and I've cut that so it's flat and then again I'm going to take my pokey tool and in the center somewhere coming out there I'm actually going to hold that there then and again from the corner of that brown without moving it from the edge of the flat area from the point of the brown into my dot and from the point of the brown again into my dot and then that will drop off there and then when I move that back down there I end up with the same amount of brown all the way around and that's how I like to do my sort of tags like that but again this is a different colour to what I've got on the card so what I need to do again and I'm going to bring in a bit of scrap this time so I don't have to wash my so I don't have to clean my mat I'm going to take the dark brown and again just around the edges because that's the only bit I'm going to see after we put the sentiment on there okay so that's that and then I'm going to take the black and go over that as well and just make it as dark as I want it okay so now that is going to be the same colour as everything else and again before you actually take put that back in your thing thinking it's only for the light brown you've put black on it so just take off some of the ink so that you know you haven't got the black on it again and place that to the side that is now a bit of scrap I've now got that piece there and I'm just going to give that a quick wipe just in case there's a bit of wet ink on it and you can see there's always a bit of wet ink on it because it's some cards it sits on the top especially when you put in two sort of colour inks on it and then a little bit of glue guys can't can I stamp straight onto the waxed backing piece you can stamp onto the waxed backing piece but what you would have to do is then put um, some embossing powder on there as well so if you want the clear embossing powder that's up, up here with me Gav marvellous question you can stamp on the wax piece but just like we did on the first card we have to heat emboss it as well so because otherwise the ink will just sit on top of the wax it's not going to go anywhere so if you're only using a dye based ink pad it's not going to dry on the wax okay it'll just rub off completely no matter how long you leave it there okay so now I've got this sentiment and I'm going to pop some three D foam pads on it. I don't know where to put that at an angle actually. Just put it straight. I'll just put it straight. I'll bring that down a bit. I'm going to put that there. So that's that. And then if you look at your circle dies. And you take two little small ones like that in the box for it. You take two dies like that, 
Okay, you can do that. Or if you happen to be lucky to have some of the oldie worldy punches, <laughs> you can take them so that they're smaller and bigger. Okay, and then what I'm going to do just to make this a little bit darker, I'm actually going to just I don't want it to be, I'm not worried about the yellow or the brown being on there. I'm just going to literally wax some of this on there. So I want it to be quite random. So this is the circle I actually cut out for the frame for this card. So I'm just darkening that up a little bit. And then putting some yellow in there. And now just really making it a little bit different. And then if I wanted to then I could even bring in some black or some of the darker colour just to just so that's there. So I'm just throwing some darker colour on it around the area. And that's now a bit of a random bit of yellow again. So that's now it's gonna blend in with certain things there. Okay, so I wouldn't be too fussy with that. Just put it together. If you're using colour card, then obviously you don't have to do this. It's only because I'm using mixed. It's only because I need to colour it down a bit. Make it the same colour to match. Okay. But there is a technique to this as well. So, if you are using the dyes... Cut the smaller die first out of pieces of card and then put the big one on after and cut around that one so you can put it off centered like that. You can put it in the center, you can make it all sorts of different shapes. You can come a little bit away from the center, a lot away from the center. You can bring the dies right up to each other then where the circle is and make it really thin. So I wanted to do a lot of things like that, and that is how you get these little patterny things like that and then the centre bits are come out of the small ones you can use on the card as well. So I'll show you how to do that with the punches which is what I'm going to do because it's quicker. So I'm just going to push my punch in. I'm just going to do five. Oh, I'll do four. Four is plenty. Okay. So I've now got little brown circles look that I can pop around, pop in under the frame. Okay, it just adds that extra little bit of decoration to the card. Okay. Yeah, see, so I could I could just use the little circles and put them around. But then if I take the the big punch and put it in, I don't know if you can see that. Let me put a bit of white paper in with it as well. And then you might be able to see that better. Ah, there we are. So if I put that in there. You can see then whether I'm cutting right near the, the small circle. I can do them centre, I can do them off centre, I can move that around anyway. Okay, so that's what I will do. Okay, just wanted to be, you to be able to see the small one. And then I'm just going to cut them. And like I said, you can do them off centre, you can do them all off centre, you can do some centred. Um, you can put cogs in this, you can, you know, you can. You can use whatever dies you have. Okay, and I've actually just lost one on the floor, which happens to be the one I kept centre. And then if I put them on there, you can see then that they are extra decorative things as well. And you can do a background with that with sticky. You can do loads of them, put them on a double side sticky sheet, and you can actually make a whole background out of that and then add glitter or gilding flakes all in between it okay but now I'm going to take my glue again okay and what I tend to do I'll take my card and I'll decide where I want to put them first so I will put that sort of there put that one sort of there Move that half circle sort of there so that I can put one down here. Just coming out of there. And then I'm going to put another one. I might put another one. those two up there actually. 
see it so so get it where you want to get it first put that there oops wrong side so I'm gonna put three there and I'm gonna put that one over here okay in fact I'll take that one from there I do like that one in there actually I do like that spot there because it shows up more I can even bring that out a bit more as well so get them until you're happy mm -hmm. There we are. So I'm happy with that there. So once you're happy with that there, then you take your wet glue, and this could be the finer nozzle glue if you wanted to use that. Put a little bit of glue on there, and stick them on the card. So you know exactly then that you're happy with your design before you've stuck them down. There's nothing worse than sticking something down and going, oh, that would have gone better if it was over there, or, or stuff like that. And again, so you could cut these bits out of, so if you're doing a fairy card or stuff like that, you could cut this out of glitter card, um, you know, mirror card, so you can really go to town with it really. It's all down to personal choice. That one's going to go in there. So we're actually coming to the end of our crafting day yeah it is quite easy it's just it's just having that base really once you can get the base then you can work things around it I mean change the color of the background change different color inks that you're using on this um, use different stamps and the card is going to change dramatically you know so yeah it's 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 quite easy to make a card for a man and we do like a nice card as men you know so now that is that's that Oop. that's my small little dies so like I said you can use little dies you can make them as big as small so you just take the dies that you have you know I mean my dies are all them and that's not counted in the other ones that's in between them so there's a few there's a couple missing from there and that's the ones Gavin's got downstairs that we did use for the frame so that's the two that goes in between that one and that one so that is a big set of circle dies and they are the um, the crafts two large nesting dies which we've got some of them in I think or some of the shapes so that now is your card. So from a blue one to a brown one, from landscape to portrait. And that is basically our cards. So I'm just gonna have a little chat with you now, see how you all are. See if there's any questions you'd like to ask. I've got my full divided attention now because I'm not grabbing things, looking everywhere and trying to do things. I've got a few there. I've got a few here as well. We don't want them. <laughs> They're half size of them ones. The same ones. Thank you, Joel. Did you enjoy that? I thoroughly enjoyed showing you those techniques. For today's craft along, as Donna wants to see Gavin's card as well. To see how you're going. Yes, we have ordered the... Thanks for the tips. That's okay, Sue Nightingale. Sarah, those small circles are very clever. They are. They do add something to it. And if if your sort of person you're making the card from is from sort of the the, the retro days, uh, they are quite retro circles when you do them off-centre from each other. They're, so they're quite nice. Hmm? Your era, then. 
my era, yeah, as Gavin just said. So there they are. So that, oh there. <laughs> you want to see the look I had when I dropped that? Oh, 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 I could have been in the bed next to my mother. <laughs> that sounds wrong as well. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, she's in a hospital bed, mate. So. so there we are. So that is Gavin's. Oh, lots of love. Purpley pinky leggy one. I, think I can't see love's going up on mine. You can on there, yeah. So that's Gavin's one that he's done. So as you can see, he's put his, to the, his circle to the left and then put the, cent, the, the stamp there instead of putting it on a tag. So this is your choice. You can change it up. You, Gavin's used the little star stamps around the edge. So this is down to you. Oh, wow, Gavin, that is beautiful, Donna says. Oh, Deborah says, wow. <laughs> yeah, they're lovely. It's You can change it up so much as just... It is very, very good. So, to recap, wax paper is definitely your friend with cards like this, I think. Let's see if I can get them all on here, shall I? So you can just about see them all. If I move those inks from there up to there, then I can move that over a bit there, that over a bit there. I'm going to leave that one there, like so. And then I can bring, that was mine, that was mine, there, and then that one was Gavin's. So if I move that, then you can see what Gavin, where Gavin went today with his, and where I've gone with mine. <laughs> oh, he's... He always whines. <laughs> no problem, Bev. They are. They're, they're so nice. And, you know, you've done the first card. We never put any foam pads on there. So the only depth there, really, is from the from the string. So you could do exactly the same with your, with your man's card. If you don't want to put the foam pads on the back of the, the circle of this, then don't, you know. You can keep it all flat, so then the postage is less. Thank you, Donna. I think they're all stunned as well. Do like Gavin's uh, little fairy one there. And Gavin actually used all the um, opaque ink pads on there. And then the Versafine for his stamping. And I don't know if he actually... Yep, he actually heat embossed that as well. So you use the black heat embossing powder on that so you can see it's all nice and shiny. Okay, so that's what that is. Very magical garden, lovely colours. He will love that Sue. He's actually back downstairs now so he's probably watching it all downstairs. So yes, in fact he's probably got his, got a straw in the wine bottle again. So yes, yeah, so please do. Um, anybody who makes any cards to their version, um, please do feel free to to send pics to Gavin on Valleycraft Messenger, um, and then it'll make it easier for him then to be able to to share it over onto our Facebook page. Um, so. Oh, thank you, Alison. Really enjoyed today. Beautiful card, Gavin. I did fairies too. We'll post them to you later. Hope your mum will be okay tomorrow. Yet. Yeah, we're hoping she'll be okay. She seems quite quite upbeat about it, to be honest with you, Alison. I thought she'd be a little bit more worried about it, but she's not. But I'm not sure if that's what um, our Yvonne had done. And I mean, it's, it's completely changed her life, really. So I may send her a message and, and see if it was, just to ask her how she is and stuff as well. So yeah, so just the different magazines used. I used an old one, which was, had Sheena um, Mer Merlady in a bottle. 
and then they had lots of sailors one which i know a lot of you had when that came out and that's probably about a year ago i would think and then issue 83 which is what gavin have used for his two cards um there's i think there's two lots of stamps in there um you get a stamp with an owl and the hair and then you all and and then you get a big a4 set of stamps then with lots of the fairies, trees, and all sorts of other things on it, and the house. And then I know the flower I used for my first card was literally from um, one of the the more recent sort of creative stamping magazines. But yes, so I thoroughly enjoyed that today. Yes. Have a lovely weekend. I will keep everybody posted about mum um, and how things are going there. And I will, and, oh, okay, there you are. before I say to her, I shall show you the stamps that you do get on that issue 83. So you get the Crafty Individuals, which is the hay with the moon behind him and the owl with the moon far, far away. And then you get these. So there is a flower one there. Butterflies, a bumblebee, which is stunning. The stars that Gavin used. The little fairies Gavin used. And some of the little the trees. And then he also used these sort of grasses down there. But there's a little mouse on there. There's toadstools. There's all sorts of... There's birds as well. So as I've drawn the birds, there is a... a bunch of birds there so I could have used that so yeah and there's some good sentiments in you as well wishing you a magical day thinking of thank thinking, thinking of you thank thinking you, of you just thank you, you just for you just believe love you to the moon and back happy new home which is what a nice house would be for happy birthday let's go somewhere only we know and best wishes and it's got little hedgehog rabbits hairs and stuff like that okay so I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining us today and um, we are in the shop on Monday from 10 till 12 and we'll be proceeding to do that every Monday from 10 till 12 and that is the only days we're going into the shop um, it is contactless collection if there's anything you can't find on the website, like our loose card, then please ring us between 10 and half past 11 on the work number on Mondays. And then you can tell us what you want. We can pick what you want. And then you can pay over phone um, by card. Okay. So thank you very much again for joining us. Don't forget, Gavin will be doing a live on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. And it's going to be a bit of a, a nice one. He's going to be using, is it like an exploding box type of thing? It's not an exploding box. It's a box where you put little tags and, and put things coming up on acetate. Uh, but he's going to show you two versions and how to do that. And yeah, look forward to See you. seeing you again. Bye, everybody. Bye, Donna. Bye. Speak to you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.